the Irene Polanyi equation. All right, so this has to do ultimately with the combo of thermodynamics and kinetics. We know that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, and that's a measure of the spontaneity of the reaction. If delta G ends up being positive, we have a non-spontaneous process. If it ends up being negative, it's a spontaneous process. And whenever we have the same signs for delta H and delta S, that's when we get into an ambiguous case for which we have to look at the reference temperature, right? Specifically, since delta H is negative, you want temperature to be low so that you don't affect your delta H, lower than the reference value to be most exact. All right, so in this particular equation, you know, we find out that the temperature, the reference temperature is 456.5, and for the process to be spontaneous, you want the temperature to be lower than 456.5. But there is a component associated with this which tells you how fast the reaction may actually take place, and it is the kinetics. Now, the irene polan equation, even though I'm not going to go into the derivation, ultimately has a neat way of linking thermodynamics with kinetics, specifically the thermodynamics of what's going on at the transition state, the top of the activation energy hill. All right, so you have your orders, you have your Arrhenius equation to get your activation energy. The, the irene polan equation um, is uh, an interesting one. I'm not going to derive it itself. I'm going to just show it to you right here. The format is not at all that different from the... Um, Van't Hoff equation, or even the Arrhenius equation itself, except that instead of plotting the ln of the rate constant like we do in the Arrhenius equation, we plot the ln of the rate constant over temperature in Kelvin. And when you do that, when you plot that versus the inverse temperature, the values that you end up getting are not activation energy or enthalpy or entropy of reaction. Instead, you get the enthalpy at the transition state, the top of the hill in the activation energy. And you also get the entropy at the transition state, along with some of the constants. So, what also needs to be said is that entropy tells you a little bit about what's going on at the transition state. If the value of the entropy at the transition state is negative, this is telling you that the transition state is more order than the reactants used to be. What that basically kind of implies is that you're bringing things together. Um, maybe there's two molecules that have to come in closer together to allow the reaction to proceed forward. And then this will be indicating that that could potentially be happening. On the other hand, if the value of the entropy the transition state is positive, this will tell you that you have a much more disorder uh, situation than you used to have in the reactants. So this could be signaling that you are breaking a bond in the course of the transition state. All right, but let's do an example to show you how this works out. Once again, we're going to be dealing with uh, data tables. And this is a table that I used back in the kinetics lecture to derive the activation energy. And that's something that I can still ask you to do. I can still ask you to find the activation energy in addition to the other parameters. So you will still have to take the ln of the rate constants. You will still have to change the temperature to Kelvin. And you will still have to divide 1 with the temperature in Kelvin to get the proper values. If you plot ln of k versus 1 over t, you will get a line with a negative slope. And from the slope, you can extrapolate the activation energy. Simply stated, multiply the slope by negative r. And that will generate the value of the activation energy. Although at the beginning, it will be in joules per mole. You just remember to divide by 1,000 to get it in kilojoules per mole. So that's what we did in the past for the kinetics. The additional feature is that now I'm going to divide the rate constants by the corresponding temperatures, and I recommend that you do all this in Excel once more. So divide the rate constants by the temperature, you're going to get values. Take the natural log of that ratio, you're going to get yet a set of new values. Take your temperature uh, and look at the inverse of those temperatures, right? And now plot the ln of k over t versus 1 over t. You will get a new line with a new slope and a new y-intercept. And the slope now equals the negative of the enthalpy at the transition state over r. So multiply the slope by negative r, 
you will now get the enthalpy at the transition state. Originally, it will be in joules per mole. Divide this value by a thousand so that you get it in kilojoules per mole. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is the intercept. The y-intercept equals the entropy of the transition state over R plus the ln of the Boltzmann constant divided by the Planck's constant. Now, technically speaking, the ln of Kb over H is just a simple constant. So in future problems, I'm just going to provide you with a number. The number itself is 23.76. So delta H, excuse me, delta S at the transition state over R plus 23.76 is going to equal 21.47 as being told by the equation of the line. So we first subtract 23.76 from both sides and we multiply by the value of the gas constant 8.3145 and this means that the transition state the entropy of the transition state is negative 19 joules per mole kelvin it's not very huge but it is negative meaning that you are forming a slightly more orderly uh, complex than the reactants used to be so this could mean that um, there is a rearrangement in the molecular shape giving you something a little bit more order in fashion or maybe two of the components are coming closer together to form a new bond but all right so that's how you kind of link to some degree the kinetics to the thermodynamics this is going to tell you what's happening a little bit at the transition state and that can help you actually determine what the possible mechanism could be for the reaction that you're dealing with all right, in the next video, we're going to talk about non-standard conditions from the point of view of delta G.